before we get into the surprising and eye-opening results of recreating famous designs, check out my Cameron Diaz party artwork. Or what about George Bush in 80s synth pop style? But as you will see in today's video, I did pick up some awesome techniques along my journey when it comes to prompts in Mid Journey. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, what is Mid Journey? Very briefly, it's an algorithmic design software based on Discord where you type in prompts, which it then takes and turns into artwork. Simples. So, what famous designs did I try and recreate using Mid Journey? Well, firstly, we're going to try and make the Snapchat logo, which should be simple, right? And then secondly, a movie poster and finishing things off with a Pokemon card design. And then at the end, I hurled some very design-esque commands at Midjourney. And to kick things off for the Snapchat logo, I wanted to be really fair and avoid using the word Snapchat. And I tried what I thought would be a winning prompt solution. And actually I'm using the $30 a month plan with Midjourney, so I have my own chat room with the AI. How sweet. And things are typically faster using this plan. This was my very first result, and as you can see, the design isn't flat because there are drop shadows, despite my prompt of a flat logo design. Now, before we move on, quickly, what are these buttons below my results? Well, the U is for upscale, which will bring my image to higher resolution and quality and a higher finish. And the V is for variations. So for example, I could click V4, and this will show me my fourth design in different variations. But I did dislike the first results and I wanted to beat my computerized companion here and get better results. My next prompt stated no shadows and no eyes, which I would learn later is a mistake. The results were starting to render in, but I fired another prompt just to save some time. Plus the results that were rendering in didn't look too promising to be honest. And out of the next few results, I had a mix of random flat graphics and then what appears to be paper cutouts of childlike ghosts. Yeah, this was my first challenge and I was a noob at this point, just so you know. So I dug in deep and I started using the variation button and changing up the prompts a tiny bit. Now I feel like these were heading closer to the Snapchat logo because we have that black outline that is synonymous with that logo, but I'm not sure how these three black marks actually came into the party during this mid-journey exploration. Also, there is a shadow on this design still. And to sign off the first challenge, here is what I managed to come up with for Snapchat using the available time that I had. Now it's quite close, I guess, but the shape is not right, obviously, and neither is the color. Also, this isn't a vector design, so if you are intending to use Midjourney for vector designs, you're gonna have to vectorize them thereafter. But it was pretty close, I'm sure you agree. Anyways, it's time to get trigger happy and we're making a film poster. And this one got interesting. I wanted to make a poster for John Wick, and I did try one prompt, which I then expanded upon. And as you can see in the prompt, I start off with the main focus of the render, and then I add in effects and other descriptive words. This is when I started to experiment with words like cinematic lighting, realism, and so on. And we are going to expand on that later in the video. Now, I wanted John Wick, aka Keanu Reeves, to be standing in a city street in the rain holding a pistol, and I gave me a journey a couple of different prompts right out of the gate. Oh, I also started to use 8K as a prompt here as well. These looked way too cartoonish for my liking and too artsy. I was after some raw realism on this design. And the ones from behind also were a bit too artsy as well. However, often when you upscale a design in mid journey, the realism does become increased as well. I thought to add in the prompt movie poster to see what would happen to the design and I liked what I was looking at. From here, I started to get trigger happy myself and I started creating variations of certain design outcomes. I really like the cityscape and vibe from these designs right here. It was starting to take the appearance I really, really wanted. However, making John Wick was proving to be the most difficult part of this challenge. There wasn't enough realism there for me and often his face would be deformed or he'd have a hand missing or just something weird like that. This is when I learned of one of the most useful things in Mid Journey. After upscaling a design, you can do things like upscale to the max or remaster. Two things we will use in a big way later. First, let's take a look at some of the honorable mentions that could have been used on this design. This one would have been almost perfect if it wasn't for his face looking so weird and non-realistic. However, I loved everything else about this design. The way the lighting plays along the middle section is just really, really neat and it's pretty epic. However, his legs are really deformed and it's not what we need for this poster, which is a great shame. 
This one did a good job of proving the likeness of Keanu Reeves, but is too cartoonish and almost looks like something out of the game GTA. So I had to scrap that one too. And the last one before the final design, a really cool design that shows insane detail in his suit jacket, the rain on the floor and so on. But I did think I could do better. And here is the final design. It still isn't what I was aiming for precisely, which is a theme I found with Mid Journey actually as a designer, but it does the job. And I did add some work in Photoshop, but it's more or less the same design as I got for Mid Journey. And for the third and final design, a Pokemon card. Can we actually make a Pokemon card using Mid Journey? Well, to do that, we first need a Pokemon, and I wanted to try and make Pikachu because it's the most well known Pokemon I thought Mid Journey might pick up on it. After one failed prompt due to me being the Typo King, I decided to try out a shorter prompt and this time around I gave Pikachu a fighting chance in a forest. I also started a new prompt using the word realistic. Some of the first results were actually pretty cool and I could see that creating variants and upscaling them had potential. I really like the neon lighting on these designs as well. The second results did look a bit more odd actually and seemed to have lost that typical Pikachu look. Even more so in the third set of results where Pikachu started to resemble that of a kind of cross between a rabbit and a rat. So next I went for a prompt that would actually prove to be a wise wise move, a very short prompt that directly spoke about a specific type of Pikachu. Yes these look very odd, some of them really cool sure, but not what we need. This four eyed thing is straight up creepy actually, but at this point I hadn't actually used any upscaling or variations of Pikachu. So I upscaled the fourth design and I used the remaster trick that we did for the movie poster and this was the first result that we got which yes looks creepy and weird but I expanded on this design and if by magic the remaster option gave me this which was so so cool. It even has the red cheeks that Pikachu has as well. I'm not sure what this text is at the bottom here but I expanded on this design and we found a winner. Here's the Pikachu that we finished with and the Pokemon card that I made using Mid Journey. So those are the three challenges, but I wanted to try something a bit different at the end of this video. I threw in prompts that specifically asked for a certain kind of logo for a certain niche, and I wanted to see what the results would be. This is at four times the usual speed, by the way, and so you can actually see the results are not very great for the prompt I'm giving. Now I've seen some fairly decent logos being made using Mid Journey, but I haven't actually really been able to do that myself and produce anything meaningful for a logo design. It's great for art, for concepts, for backgrounds and other materials, but for straight up precise logo designs that are clean, I think it still has to go some way before it's actually going to achieve this just yet. It can kind of work, and I've learned some prompts since this video in regards to logo design, but that will be for another video later in the future on this channel. And that's the thing with Mid Journey though, it can help create something you have in mind, but it cannot kind of finish off a design, it can add typography, alignment or other finishing touches. The finer details a designer will have to add later, and of course a designer needs to have that kind of eye for design in the first place, so Mid Journey still has a way to come and humans are still in control at the moment. A client isn't going to be able to head into something like Mid Journey and make an efficient brand that appeals to their target audience. There are knowledge factors and skill sets that cannot be replicated by AI just yet. But hey, if you want to see a video about a different kind of AI, then just click the video on screen. But until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.